In the world's eyes, these names are the most popular and powerful names on the earth. But in the perspective of eternity, they pale in comparison to the name above all names. Join Pastor John Osteen of Lakewood Church for a new look at the seven names of God. Revelation that rescues, the power in a name. For insight, practical help, and the inspiration you need to change your life, watch John Osteen every week on this station. In this hurting world, we all need answers. Though the world is constantly changing, God's wisdom is the constant solution. I'm John Osteen, pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. We're a family church made up of people of all denominations, races, and walks of life. We've dedicated our lives to bringing the compassion of Jesus Christ into every person's world. And after many years, we've developed a reputation for helping those who have been overcome to be overcomers. Your dreams and desires are important to God and to us. We want God's best for you. Join with me the next 30 minutes and discover the life-changing power of God's Word. For over 54 years, John Osteen has touched the lives of individuals around the world. Founder and pastor of Lakewood Church, an international training center, teaching people to use God's Word to overcome life's everyday challenges. A local church with a worldwide vision, Lakewood is dedicated to helping hurting people in America and in over 100 nations of the world. Don't miss the next 30 minutes with Pastor John and Dodie Osteen at the Oasis of Love, a place where miracles happen and lives are changed. I want to welcome you to the program today. Everybody in Lakewood Church is all, they're always glad you tune in. Give them a good amen. amen. Here's something you'll like because God is a God of mercy. It says, come and have mercy on me as is your way with those who love you. Did you know so many times we need mercy? I mean, every day we need mercy, but it's God's way. And, and if we as his children can expect it to be his way to give us mercy if we really love him and try to serve him. So if you need mercy, just say, God, I need mercy. You're the great giver of mercy, so I need your help, and he'll be glad to help you. Amen. And everybody said amen. amen. I want to say to the television audience, first of all, you who are in the Houston area, when you watch this in the Houston area, you still have time to come out here. We do a lot more in Lakewood Church than just the preaching you see on television. Oh my, we've had a time here this morning. So you won't die, come on you. We have so many seats, you can be anonymous. Nobody's gonna embarrass you. Just come on out and be out here. Give them a good welcome, say amen. amen. And then I wanna encourage you to write, we are getting your letters. Now we can't answer every letter, but we are getting your letters. Thank you for writing. And we have this new tape and book catalog we want to send you. We want to bless you with everything that we have. So write in and ask for it. And we thank you for all the encouraging words. Let's hold up our Bibles. You folks on television do the same thing. Wave them around a little bit. All right. Everybody make this confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. Today I, will the Word of God. I, boldly I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My, mind is alert. My, heart is My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I, never be the same. I am about to receive, about to receive the, incorruptible, the incorruptible, indestructible, indestructible ever-living ever seed, seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Now shout it out. Never, never, never. never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We are reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 6. So if you are watching by television, you can open your Bible there. And God spoke to Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptian kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say I unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. Now I want you to notice these seven I wills. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rid you out of the bondage. 
I will redeem you with a stretched out arm, with great judgment. I will take you for a people. I will be to you a God. Verse 8, and I will bring you in, into the land. And the last part of that, and I will give it to you for an inheritance. Could I have an amen? amen. You know, God, God's word is so intricate, so wonderful, and so miraculous. All 66 books are miracles in themselves. Now, you know, we need to know God. And uh, the more we know about God and the more we know God, the more we will love Him and the easier it will be to have faith in Him. The Bible says the people who do know their God, not know about Him, but know their God, shall be strong and shall do mighty exploits. You know, God wants us to know Him. Now, the first word for God in the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That word is Elohim. Everybody say Elohim. Elohim, Elohim is a plural unity. It, it means one, but it means more than one. So there we see the basis of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. For instance, when God began to talk about making man, he said, let us make man. Not I'm going to make man, but let us make man. There's more than one. And then uh, when the Tower of Babel was being built, God said, let us go down. And then uh, over there in Isaiah, uh, where uh, Isaiah saw the Lord in chapter 6, the Lord said, who sh whom shall we send and who shall go for us? So God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost involved there. In Psalm 2, 10, it says, uh, you know, it says, kiss the son, lest he be angry with you. In Job, it asks the question, if you know God, what's his name and what's his son's name? So all through the Bible, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost is in there. And uh, we don't have to understand it. We just enjoy it. You can't understand why you ladies chose that ugly thing sitting by you. Oh, I thought I just wanted to wake you up. Just wanted to wake you up. I know you think he's, you know, he's beautiful, but uh, love is blind. <laughs> but uh, you know, you don't have to understand why. Just enjoy him. Enjoy her. Amen. amen. Could I have a better amen? amen? You know, God, you know, he's Elohim and he wants to reach out. He wants to bless us. But then God, when man fell, he began to deal with man and man fell. God changed his name in Revelation. He began to be known as Jehovah Elohim. Now, Jehovah means the God who reveals himself. So God wants to reveal himself to the human race. Man is in a fallen state. Man is in death. He's in darkness. He's, he's away from God. He's in sin. He's on his way to hell. God wants to help you. And so God said, I'm going to be not just Elohim, I'm going to be Jehovah Elohim. I'm going to be the God who unveils myself to meet your every need. So the word Jehovah is, is, is hooked up and made a compound name, and God gives these seven compound names so we can understand what he wants to be for us and what he will do for us. Could I have an amen? Amen. So I'm going to entitle this uh, series of messages that I'm beginning today on revelation that rescues the power in a name. Everybody say revelation that rescues. Revelation. The power in a name. Power. See, when God gives a name, he is giving his desire to meet your need. Those seven redemptive names, we'll talk about them later, is Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Jehovah Nisa, the Lord our banner in warfare. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Jehovah Raha, the Lord our shepherd. The, uh, Jehovah Sipkanu, the Lord our righteousness. And Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is ever present. So there is no need that anybody has in this world that cannot be met through our Jehovah God. Every need you have is met in God's revelation. We're talking about revelation that rescues 
the power in a name. I want you to notice that God said, I will bring you out of Egypt, but I won't stop there. I will bring you into the land, the land of Canaan. Now, you know, we've always taught, and as a Baptist minister, I always preach, you know, that when we, we got out of Egypt, then the Canaan land was heaven, and we were going to heaven, and we'd sing that old song, On Jordan's stormy banks I stand, and cast a wistful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. Oh, who will come and go with me? I'm bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I'm bound for the promised land. You know, and then we had the idea that Canaan represented heaven. Canaan doesn't represent heaven. No, no. Canaan land was filled with walled cities and, and enemies. They had to fight their way in there. They had disease. They had attacks. They had every kind of trouble in the world. I'm telling you, folks, when you get to heaven, there's going to be no more giants in the land. There's going to be no more walled cities, sickness or disease. You're going to be beyond all of that. Hallelujah. Heaven is a real place, and we're going there. But you're not going to be, it's not going to be like that. They had to fight their way in. But God said, I want to bring you out of Egypt and into Canaan. Well, now, what does Canaan represent? Canaan represents your inheritance that you ought to have right down here on the earth. For 19 long years as a Baptist minister, and everybody say, God bless the Baptist. God bless the Baptist. You see, I didn't have any light on this. I'm not blaming the Baptist for that. But you see, for 19 years, I knew I was saved. I got saved on that way, on that Way home from that nightclub, two o'clock in the morning, lost, undone, without God, drop out of high school. And Jesus came to knock at my heart's door. Thank God I got saved. And the other miracle is he called me to preach. But now for 19 years, I wearily tre tre went trudging through life without the power of God. I thought, surely there's more than I've got. I'm on my way to heaven, but I'm not in heaven. Thank God for the sweet by and by, but I'm in the nasty now and now. I need help. Nobody told me about the promised land. There's a promised land for all the Baptists, all the Methodists, all the Catholics, all the Presbyterians, all the Pentecostals, all the everybody's. Lutherans, Episcopalians, Episcopalians. <laughs> you Episcopalians, forgive me for calling you Episcopalians. <laughs> But there's a promised land for all of God's children. You don't have to leave your church and join Lakewood Church to have all that God has for you. You don't have to leave your church and join a Pentecostal church or a Charismatic church or a Methodist church to have all God for, has for you. God loves all of His children in all denominations. But God wants to get you out of Egypt. That's salvation. And then he wants to get you into, into the Canaan land. What is Canaan land? That's the baptism in the Holy Ghost, prophesying, praying with the sick, casting out devils, the supernatural gifts of the Holy Ghost. Oh, that's the place of rest. That's the place of, of power. That's the place where God is real. And you know when he brought them out of Egypt by the power of the blood? Did you know when he brought them out and they... They, they went up to the edge of the promised land. Did you know they wouldn't go in? Two men out of 10 said they ought to go in, but 10 said, let's don't get in. They looked over there in that promised land. They said, oh, there are giants in the land. Oh, there are walled cities in the land. Oh, there are dangers in the land. We better not try to go in. God said, I give it to you. God said, I give it to you. But they said, no, we better not go in because it's, oh, it's, it's just bad in there. We, we'll, we'll get eaten up in there. We'll lose everything in there. And that's the way, you know, we are when we get saved. And somebody tells us about, you know, uh, the baptism in the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, praying for the sick, casting out devils, dancing before the Lord, the supernatural gifts. Oh, they said, don't, don't, don't go around them. Oh, the giants in the land. Don't go in there. You lose your dignity. You lose your excellence. You lose everything. No, and millions and millions of Christians have turned tail and they have run away. But thank God there's a risen a generation that's going to go into the land. They're going to go in. They're not ashamed of what Jesus gives. 
Jesus is the one that gives the baptism in the Holy Ghost. See those 120 out there on the day of Pentecost speaking in tongues, acting like they're drunk in the Spirit. There they are. Who did it to them? Jesus. I said, Jesus. Jesus did it to them. The head of the church. So I said, I don't want any of that speaking in tongues in my church. You better want what the head of the church wants to give you. The signs and the miracles and the wonders in the book of Acts. What is it? They've entered into the promised land. Don't go dragging through life. God's not as real as he ought to be. You have no power in your life. Have no supernatural communication with him. No signs and wonders and miracles in your life. No, we ought to rise up and go into the land. Dare to believe God, to get in. Don't just get out, get in. Sure, you're coming out of Egypt. Sure, God rescued me from the devil's power. But I'll tell you, I didn't rest there. Finally, somebody told me about Canaan land. And I got the baptism in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, prophesying, praying for the sick, casting out devils. We see the miracles of God. And I'll tell you, this great church is here because of the power of God, not because of uh, of me and my family. Thank God for that. Now, now God wants you to know that the promised land is for you. Here in this text, the Lord said, Now, I was not known by this name before, but now I will be known by the name Jehovah. I am going to reveal to you how I will meet every need if you are there after you come out of Egypt to go on to promised land. They told me, they said, well, Brother O.C., now that you speak in tongues, you will never have a ministry. (laughs) They told me that. They told me, you have ruined your life by getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. You will never have any place to preach. A couple or three of them were talking about me several years ago and said, uh, wonder what happened to poor old Brother Osteen. He lost his mind, you know. Now I got the mind of Christ. They said, uh, wonder where he is, wonder where he is. He probably is running a filling station. And I am. I am. I said, we're getting all of it full of the Holy Ghost. They told me, they told me I would never have any place to preach, that I'd ruin my ministry. Well, look around. Glory be to God. I want you to know the devil's a liar. When we, const- we, when we restrict, uh, restrict ourselves to one denomination or one movement or one this or one that, we limit the Holy Ghost. The devil is a liar. He says, you'll die in the desert. You'll die in in that wilderness out there. Don't get mixed up with people like Jesus had in the book of Acts. I'm telling you, come on in. The swimming's fine. God wants to get you out, and he wants to get you in, and you've got to be willing to go in. But now God says, by his name, I'm going to meet every need that you have if you will dare to follow me. And we're going to talk about the seven names that unveil what God will be to you. You know, if you don't know anything, you you can't have any faith. Faith begins with knowledge. Faith begins with facts. When you have the facts, then you can have faith in God. And when God freely unveils himself and shows you who he is, it's easy to have faith in him. Every one of you, wherever you are, Whatever condition you're in, you may be lost, undone without God. You may be half drunk. You may be sitting there with your family broken up. You may be in terrible trouble. You may have AIDS. You may have all kinds of diseases. You may be bound by habits. Whatever it is, God wants you to know he can meet your needs. Every person who has come into this great church here today, from the top to the very bottom, there's not a one of you that doesn't have a battle. Not a one of you that doesn't fight the powers of darkness. I want you to know God will do things for you today. Say, God will. God will. God will. 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 See, now notice what God says he would do. He said, I will bring you out from under your burdens. Now look up here a moment. I remember the burden of sin I had in my life. I know that men and women without God, without the new birth, have a burden of sin. 
Oh, that's that sin of adultery, that sin of, uh, of drinking, that sin of lying and stealing and killing and, and rebelling against God. Whatever it is, and sin has a weight to it. It weighs upon us. Amen. What can wash away those sins? Amen. See, what is it? No man, no psychologist, no psychiatrist can ever, ever, ever wash it away. They can find it, but they can't eradicate it. What can wash away our sins? Nothing. Aren't you glad there was more to that song than that? Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. He said, I'll bring you out. I've shed my blood, and the blood can cleanse from all sin. And whatever sin, whether it's a little sin or a multitude of sins, it's all the same with God. He will lift the burden on your heart. He'll lift it off. All you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart and save me and be my Lord and be my Savior. He said, I'll lift your burdens. Oh, thank God we're free from the burden of sin. Amen. Then God said, I will do something else. I will bring you out of bondage. You know, a lot of people that get rid of the burden still have bondages. A woman came to Jesus over in the book of Luke there, and she was all bowed over. Doctors would say she had rheumatoid arthritis or curvature of the spine, but she couldn't lift up, always looked down at the earth. And, uh, and Jesus said, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And they all complained. Jesus laid his hands on her, and she straightened up. And he said this, Ought not this woman whom Satan hath bound, she called sickness bondage, ought not this woman whom Satan hath bound, be loosed on the Sabbath day, and God, and he healed her right there. But you see, God, there are all kinds of bondages. I see people sitting here in this audience that are so bound by drugs and alcohol. Many of them so bound by, uh, uh, you know, strange sexual spirits. Many bound by lustful spirits, all kind of driving forces in your life. The, the bondages that the devil tries to put on you. I announce to you that God is a God who said, I will deliver you from your bondage. You don't have to drag through life. Praise God. He will break the power of cancel sin and set the prisoner free. You say, I've been to every kind of doctor in the world and he hadn't been able to help me with my bondage. Oh, I, I remember about a 20-year-old boy stood up here, uh, 22 maybe, I could call his name here, but uh, he'd been bound by alcohol since he was in his teens and nobody could help him. But one day, right here, Jesus set him free. And now he's living a good life. Many years have passed. You see, Jesus wants you to know he will break the bondage. It may be a violent temper. It may be an angry spirit. It may be a lustful eye. It may be a stingy attitude. But God will break that bondage. He said, I will. He didn't say, I'll think about it. I will bring you out of your bondage. Then he said, I'll, I'll redeem you with a stretched out arm. No, the Bible says you are not redeemed with corruptible things, such as silver and gold that perishes, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without spot and without blemish. God will reach out his arm. You have somebody's arm to take hold of. He said, take hold of my strength. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will help thee. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I want you to know the mighty hand of God is our redemption. And God said, I will redeem whatever situation you get as you make your pilgrimage through life. God said, I'll redeem you out of all of it. Can I have an amen? amen? I'll redeem you. Then let's look at these other words real quick. I will be to you a God. And then he said, I will make you my people. And then he said, I'll bring you into that land and I will give it to you for heritage. Now God is saying positive, mighty things. How are you going to get into that land? How are you going to make it after you get it? Preacher, after you get the baptism in the Holy Ghost, is God going to desert you? Will he run away from you? What's going to happen to your church? Oh, I tell you, God is well able to take care of you. Can I have an amen? amen. What's going to happen to you if you dare to go on into the things of God? God 
We'll show you in the next few Sundays the unveiling of his help for you in every area of life. And once you see who God really is and what he wants to be to you, it'll be easy to have faith and you will be able to make your pilgrimage to your promised land. And I tell you, when you get there, you're going to shout for joy because there's going to be a fulfillment that you never had before. Amen. Can I have an amen? amen? Now, I want you today, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to pray this prayer. And then I'm going to add something to that prayer for all of you who already have been saved. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I, without you I'll die and go to hell. But, oh God, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. So, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Come into my heart and save me and deliver me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a believer, and I believe you've done that. Now fill me with the Holy Ghost. Give me supernatural power to reach my generation. I believe you prayed that prayer, and I believe he's going to satisfy your longing soul. 